The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 55 well-earned battle streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 3 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. In 1922, the War Department granted permission for the Old Guard to pass in review with bayonets fixed. The Old Guard will now fix bayonets to the traditional beat of the drum. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Raymond S. Dingle, accompanied by the host, General James C. McConville, 40th Chief of Staff of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation offered by Bishop John Bryant.
Ladies and gentlemen, the invocation offered by Bishop John Bryant. Let us pray. Sovereign God, we come on this 31st day of July, 2023, to invoke your presence on this auspicious occasion. Help us, O oh God, to celebrate the life, the service, the sacrifice of our brother, your servant, our leader, Robert Scott Dingle. As we gather as family and friends, as we gather as a nation, and as we lift him, let us be mindful, O oh God, of all of the men and women and families who have given so much to keep this nation safe. Please be present. Infuse us with your grace, your love, and your peace. I offer this prayer in the name of my Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the singing of the United States National Anthem by Captain Kelly Gregg. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Please be seated. At this time, General McConville and Mrs. McConville are moving to the floor to honor the retirees. The Distinguished Service Medal is being presented to Lieutenant General Raymond S. Dingle for exceptionally meritorious service throughout his 35-year career, culminating as the 45th Army Surgeon General and Commanding General, United States Army Medical Command. Lieutenant General Raymond S. Dingle demonstrated exceptional leadership and strategic vision as he successfully led the largest reorganization and modernization of Army medicine in 50 years, 
despite the complexity of a global pandemic during his tenure. Lieutenant General Dingle's exemplary performance of duty is in keeping with the highest traditions of military service, reflecting great credit upon himself, the Army Medical Command, the Army Medical Department, and the United States Army. Headquarters Department of the Army Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following General Officer is retired. Lieutenant General Raymond Dingle. General McConville is now presenting the United States flag to Lieutenant General Dingle for his faithful service to his country. Ms. Sanja H. Dingle is awarded the Department of the Army Superior Public Service Award for outstanding service to the soldiers, civilians, and families at Army installations and the United States Army Medical Command from April 2018 through November 2023. Ms. Dingle's kindness, compassion, and unwavering commitment to the readiness and resiliency of military families has been truly inspiring. She was instrumental as a senior spouse mentor and in creating effective command information networks. Ms. Dingle's professionalism and fighting spirit for Army soldiers and their families across 35 years of devoted volunteer service are a great credit to her, the United States Army Medical Command, and the United States Army. Signed, Christine Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. On the occasion of retirement of this distinguished soldier, we also recognize the outstanding service of Ms. Sanja H. Dingle, who is being presented with the Department of the Army Certificate of Appreciation for her faithful and devoted service. It is dedicated support which has made possible such a lasting contribution to our nation. Signed, General James C. McConville, 40th Chief of Staff of the Army. At this time, Lieutenant General Dingle will present a bouquet of red roses to Mrs. Dingle, signifying his love by honoring her for her unwavering support for over 35 years of military service. He will also be presenting flowers to the matriarch of the Dingle family, Mom Council. Roses are also being presented to Lieutenant General Dingle's daughters, his daughters-in-law, and his mother-in-law. <laughs> Gift bags are being presented to his sons, his grandson, and his father-in-law, Lieutenant Colonel, retired, and Vietnam veteran Earl Howard. We are proud to recognize Lieutenant General Dingle and Mrs. Dingle's devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Please be seated.
ladies and gentlemen, General McConville. Well, good morning and, and welcome. You know, every day is a great day to serve in the United States Army because we serve with the world's greatest soldiers, and we're going to retire a great soldier today. You know, I had the honor of promoting Scott in 2019 to Lieutenant General in the chapel here at Fort Myer. And we learned a lesson there that day that we needed a bigger room next time we had a ceremony for Scott. So here we are. We are a learning organization, and it's great to have so many people here. You know, it says a lot about Scott and Sonia to have so many people to celebrate this big moment. It says they care deeply about their family values. It says they honor their friendships. And it says they value service. They care about people. They care about people. And you can see that in all the people that are here that they've influenced, that they've impacted, and that they've served with over so many distinguished years of service. You know, it's my honor to host this ceremony and help celebrate Scott Dingle's distinguished service and recognize him and Sonia for over 35 years. 35 years, how about that? Of commitment to our Army and to our soldiers. And, you know, we're, we're blessed that he is still willing to stay on a, on a bit longer. You know, with our confirmations <laughs> being held up, we had to ask Scott, and uh, it, it just tells you the type of person he is. You know, we, we, we said, Scott, will you stay? And he says, I'll stay for the Army. I'll stay for you. And it just tells you the type of person uh, that he is. And I just want to thank him, you know, for staying on when we needed him. He's that type. How about a hand for staying on? And I'd like to welcome some of our, our distinguished senior civilian and military leaders that are here. Mr. Chris Lohman, the Assistant uh, Secretary of Defense for Sustainment. Dr. Martinez, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Health Affairs. Dr. Woodson, uh, the President of USHUES. Our MRNA, our, our Vice, soon to be the, the Acting Chief. Waiting for confirmation on that one. Uh, <laughs> Sergeant Major of the Army. Uh, General Cody, General Ellis, General Wilson. Um, our, our Chief's Chief, I think the DAS is here. I saw our, a couple of, there he is, and our, our great um, previous Surgeon Generals. I think I saw, did I see Eric Schoonmaker here? He's back there in the corner. I saw Perry Horo here, and Nigel West is here, and uh, I didn't see General Blank, is he here? I'm gonna give him credit anyways. Okay, we'll give him credit for being here, <laughs> and we really appreciate that. And a special recognition to Lieutenant General Arthur Gregg. And he served during World War II, deployed to Vietnam, he's a national treasure, an Army sustainment legend, and we're honored to have his, his namesake now at Fort Greg Adams. So how about that? We've got a post named after you, sir. We're very special. How about that? Thank you, sir, for your legacy. And thank you to everyone, you know, all the other folks. We've got friends, fellow officers, warrant officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers from the active duty, reserves, and the National Guards. And, and many of you are medical and healthcare professionals for our military and veterans. And I really want to thank you for what you do every single day to take care, how about that, for our soldiers. You know, in, 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 our, in our families and, you know, those of us who spent, you know, many years in combat know 
that many of our soldiers are here because of Army medicine. Because of Army medicine. You know, and I was, I was, I was telling a story about, I had a captain uh, named Tammy that was assigned to my brigade. And she was shot down during uh, combat operation. And because of Army medicine, because of military medicine, she is alive today. And she is the Senator uh, Tammy Duckworth from the state of Illinois. And that just tells you what a great medical school we have. You know, I'd like to, you know, take some time to recognize Scotty's family because it's really uh, about family when it comes to Scott. And I'm going to start with Sonia. And I know Scott agrees he wouldn't be here to celebrate this distinguished career if it wasn't for Sonia. Yeah. All right, I, I'm going to hit Sonia. She and Scott grew up in Maryland, just outside of D.C. They first met in ele elementary school and attended junior high and high school together. Sonia was a cheerleader, a track athlete, while Scott played football, basketball, and also ran track. His path to service was through ROTC at Morgan State, where she also attended. There they went from being just friends to dating and then getting married during Scott's senior year. They have known each other, listen to this, for 46 years, and we'll celebrate their 36th weather anniversary later this year. That's incredible. Unbelievable. Now, Sonia is an amazing woman. She's an incredible contributor to the Army, her community, and her church. And like Scott, her service and influence extends well beyond helping military families as a volunteer in many church outreach programs. She did a lot, a whole bunch, for MedCom's family programs and as a leader for Army spouses, speaking at the pre-command courses, while also earning her master's degree this last December. Yeah. So, Thank you, Sonia, for everything you do. You are truly an extraordinary example to our military family. So let's have a five minutes. And we're blessed to have Scott and Sonia's four children here. Actually, they're not children. They're, they're actually adults, but hey, you know. And we want to thank them for all being here. Uh, Donna Ashley is a former Olympic development soccer athlete who played for North Carolina State Wolfpack. She enlisted in the Army and served five years on active duty as a combat medic. She played in the All-Army and All-Armed Forces soccer teams. She even played in the World Military Games in Brazil with Team Military USA. And most recently, she earned a master's degree and works as an emergency management specialist in San Juan, Puerto Rico. So how about it, man? And you, you're going to hear this theme of service throughout this, this family. Their son, Ray, is a metropolitan D.C. police officer. And Scott, it, 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 it. and he followed in his grandfather's law enforcement footsteps as Scott's, as Scott's dad served 25 years as a Capitol Police officer. I want to thank you for your service. Their other son, Dominic, is a captain in the single corps and just completed the career course, heading to be the Battalion S6 for the 97th Civil Affairs Battalion at Fort Liberty, North Carolina. He also commissioned from Morgan State University, ROTC, just like his dad. But here's, here's the big news, the really important news. He and his wife, Deliana, have a baby boy named Donovan, 16, month years old, 16 months old, honoring Scott with one of his best titles, Grandpa. How about <laughs> you? 
and their youngest daughter, Morgan, just graduated from Georgia Mason, George Mason University, where she also studied abroad in South Korea, where she was determined to stay even during COVID. She has plans to travel the world. So how about him? I'd also like to recognize Sonia's father, Army Lieutenant Colonel retired Earl Howard and his wife, Carolyn. Thank you for all being here. And also Scott's sister, Renita, and she also has an impressive athletic background. She was a high school and collegiate All-American in track and field at Virginia State, and she also ran and represented Team USA in the Japan World Games competition. And I could go on for hours, <laughs> because there's many, many more family here, and it's just really special, full of service, full of athletes, full of wonderful people who have accomplished great things. Thank you for being here. I know it makes it very special uh, for Scott. And for Scott, when we take a look at, you know, the family's important, but the people here also include coaches, mentors, and friends from both the Army and the church. And, and from that, you've done, you really made a difference for Scott, supporting him in everything he's done. As we know, Morgan State University, is a great institution that has a rich legacy of graduates who have served. And Scott is the 16th general officer that's a graduate. And I'm sure he's not the last. We have alumni here supporting Scott, Generals Larry Ellis, Kip Ward, Benny Williams, as well as the school president, Dr. David Wilson. Thank you for your service and your support for Scott. I'd also like to recognize a special mentor to Scott, retired Lieutenant Colonel George Forrest. He was Scott's football coach from Morgan State, and he quickly became a close mentor, an inspirational example for him while he was in school. But it wasn't until years later, after Scott graduated, that he realized that his coach was a decorated veteran. Scott saw his 60-minute special on LZ X-ray in the Battle of the Ladrang Valley with 1-7 Cav Gary Owen. And he realized his former coach was a war hero, that he earned a silver star for heroism, two bronze stars for valor, and three Vietnamese crosses for gallantry for his actions in Vietnam. Colonel Forrest, thank you so much for being here and your distinguished service. How about you? Now, I've been very fortunate to have served with Scott several times, and I can tell you without a doubt, our Army would not be where it is today, Army medicine would not be where it is today without Scott Dingle and the contributions he has made, not only as our Surgeon General, but as an excellent leader, an expert medical professional and caring friend he always has been throughout his career. He has extraordinary talent, and his career is full of great achievements. He's had some of the hardest and most diverse assignments as, a, as an AMED officer. He was the first SAMS graduate as an AMED officer. So that means he's a certified strategic thinker and operator. Yeah, that's a big deal, it is. <laughs> You know, he's a combat veteran. He's deployed to both Afghanistan and Iraq. And he's commanded every echelon from company to brigade to a region. He's led and implemented some incredible programs and initiatives that have significantly impacted the health of the general officers and the entire Army force. In 2019, at his promotion, I say he was the right officer at the right time to be the Surgeon General. And he proved that. Only months after he took this position, 
The entire world faced a new enemy called COVID-19, a global pandemic. And Scott did what he did best. He put together a strategic plan. He led our Army and medical professionals. He provided the best solutions possible for a whole a government approach to support our nation. He guided the implementation of embedding medical and civilian professionals to government health and emergency organizations. He guided the Medical Research and Development Command under Army Futures Command in their assistance in vaccine, vaccine development, research, and prevention. And he increased the Army's testing capacity, not only focusing on the health of the force, but communities across the country. I don't know how many lives that got saved, but it was significant. He also did some amazing things with our forces in response to COVID. You know, we were very concerned that if we took some of our reserve medical professionals out of the force, um, who would take care of our civilian communities? So he developed these Urban Augmentation Medical Task Force and brought them together, and they went in to our civilian hospitals, and they gave them hope during a critical time. And because of that, because of what he did, he was able to leave the reservists that we needed in the civilian capacities at the same time, bring those on active duty and get them into the hospitals to make a difference. It was a monumental endeavor. And with Scott's crucial leadership and, the ex and his expertise, we showed the best of what the Army could do for them. You know, Scott played a significant role in the health and readiness of our Army, and the health and readiness of our medical professionals. He led the largest reorganization of Army medicine in over 50 years and set the conditions for the transition to the Defense Health Agency, which, like all transitions, was a huge undertaking and challenge, and we will continue to work our ways through. Simply put, Scott got things done while taking care of people. How about a hand for Scott? <laughs> now, Scott, I, I want to thank you for everything you have done for our Army. I want you to know that you truly made a difference. And I know, though your father is no longer with us and he lays in rest nearby in our International Cemetery, I believe he's watching from above. And he's extremely proud of all you have accomplished. You are leaving an incredible legacy in the Army and in Army medicine. And most of all, you're leaving a le legacy and the people you have inspired. We wish you and Sonia all the best of luck and Godspeed in a well-deserved retirement. Thank you. Proud to serve you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Dingle. I told Chief I was good till he mentioned my dad. <laughs> then the air condition started acting up because I got allergies. <laughs> to the air conditions, so it causes the reaction. So that's what the reaction is. So it's going to make this kind of tough. Um, whew, thanks, Chief. Jeez. Um, to, to everyone that is here, your, your love and support. Whew. Air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> you turn the air conditioner down. <clears throat> 
But your love and support is, is, is overwhelming. You all could have been anywhere today, but you chose to come to this retirement ceremony. And I'm humbled and deeply moved by your physical presence. I thank you. I stand here today as a living example and testimony of what a perfect God can do with an imperfect vessel. Which is why my, my testimony is to God be the glory for great things he has done. I thank him for blessing me with so many family, friends, mentors, coaches who have simply been the wind beneath my wings for the past 35 years of my military career. And assembled here today is just a representation of the Category 5 hurricane, as I call them, that have been blowing and pouring into my life. First, please join me in a round of applause for the Old Guard, Captain Kelly Gregg's National Anthem, and my father in the ministry, Bishop John Bryant, prayer for their participation in this ceremony, please. Thank you. <laughs> to our 40th Chief of Staff, General McConville, thank you for taking the time out of your extremely busy schedule to do this retirement. Sir, thank you for your tremendous mentorship, leadership, unwavering trust and confidence in me and Army Medicine for over the last four years. Army Medicine has been like the phoenix bird rising from the ashes because of your support. General McConville retires himself this week after 42, 46 years in Cooling School at West Point. So please give me a round of applause for a tremendous hero and legend. Chief, I, I've seen you behind the doors. Chief, I've seen you um, just wrestle with so many complex problems, and yet you, you, you would bring me to the table, you know, at the small table, and allow me to learn and pour into me. You know, I, I must tell you this one story about my chief, though. Um, there we were. I'm retired now, chief, so I can stay for a <laughs> So, so there we were. You know, we talk about mistakes, an imperfect vessel, and, and we, we were going into the Pentagon press room, and, and Secretary McCarthy and the chief, and we all rounded. It was COVID, and we're like, okay, we're going in here. We had our talking points, and, and we all committed, and the chief and the secretary said, okay, we don't say numbers, no numbers. No, we're not, we're going to stick to the script, and here's what we're doing. And, and then we get into the Pentagon press room, and it's a different story when you're behind the the podium and the lights are coming in and the reporters are zinging them questions at you. And so Chief, Chief is great. He, he got that face and he gets up there and he keeps it. And I was like, man, that was pretty good. Then the secretary, he gets up there and does it. And then, you know, this, this one reporter whose name I won't say just kept calling up. Well, the Surgeon General, can you come back up there? And they kept coming up and she's zinging these questions. And she said, well, what's the number? What's the number? And I wouldn't say the number and sit back down and after being called up a couple of times, she's getting ready to close out. And she said, well, wait a minute. I want the Surgeon General back up there, and I want to know, you know, what's, what's the number? And, and the Chief of Secretary had said, Scotty, go back up there. I'm like, man, OK. So I go up there, and, and she asked me the same question. And then I look over to Chief, and Chief did the look away on me. He said, And then, and then I looked to the other side at, at Secretary McCarthy, and Secretary McCarthy looked at me and said, mm -hmm. <laughs> And then I said, I said the number, and then my staff fell out. They're like, oh, sir, you said the number. <laughs> but, but my chief, the tremendous leader that he is, allows us to make those type of mistakes because he is a transformational leading leader by quintessential example of no zero defects. So Chief, thank you for your trust, confidence, even <laughs> through the, the mishaps. There, there are two sayings that I always say, and you've heard me say these before. I am because we are, we are because he is. It is by the grace of God that, that each of you are an inextricable part of me. So it's not me, but, but it's always been we. And the other one, it takes a whole village to raise a child, and, and each of you are my village, and, and I love you all. 
For 35 years, I've been blessed to stand on the shoulders of giants in the form of mentors, friends, teammates, and family that God has placed into my life and with whom he's allowed me to sit, watch, and learn from. And seating in this hall and amongst you are some of the many parts and peoples of, of, of my village elders. They're my beloved mentors, friends, my big brothers, sisters, my examples, my leaders, and simply put, my dream team of mentors, battles, and friends that never gave up on the kid from Prince George's County, Maryland, Upper Marlboro. I would be remiss. I would be remiss if I did not just take a moment to just say thank you, thank you. First to all the secretaries you know, that are here, to name a few, Mr. Lowman, good to see you. Um, Mr. Martinez Lopez, and I think Guy Kiyakawa here, and I think Will is up here somewhere, and all the others. Thank, thank you, secretaries, for your civilian leadership and the impact that, that you play in not just the Army, but the Department of Defense. To, to a few key generals, there's a whole bunch of generals here, but, but there are a few that, that, that have always poured into me and, and brought me, again, in close quarters to teach and lead to Generals George, to General Wilson and Miss Wilson, if you made it, to General Ellis and Miss Ellis, to, to, to General Cody, uh, to the SMA, you know, you all are a phenomenal representation of, of leadership and what the Army's all about, I thank you. To the legendary former Army Surgeon Generals, my mentors, Lieutenant General Blanks, as he gets credit in his absence, um, Secretary Peake, General Kiley, Schoolmaker, General Horho, General West, I see you, um, General Pollock, thank you for being my confidants and round table of wise men and women. You were never too busy for me. I see you also, Dr. Woodson, thank you for your leadership. A few special mentors in battles, my big sisters and brothers from another mother, um, Patty Horho and Nadia West, and, and Bob Tennant, and and General Granger, who couldn't make it, and General Farrell, and, and Will, and Lieutenant General Gregg at 90. General, General Gregg, how old are you now? 92, 92 years old. 95. 95. At 95 years old. 95. And still pours in and mentors, and we get on FaceTime and MS Teams, and he, he, is, he is savvy in technology. And still, even after a fort being named after him, is pouring into today's leaders. So I thank each of my big sisters and big brothers and, and mentors extraordinaire for, for what they do. And General Farrell, I think you're here too somewhere. Thank you, General Farrell. Um, from day one, you know, it felt like I was online pledging when he brought me in. All right, don't you lose that call. Call him up. You better say thank you. Um, I love each of you all, each of you all. Uh, to the HQDA staff, you, you guys are phenomenal. We, I think we have the best staff in the world. Um, a, a special shout out to the Dash General Pyatt, who I think is the quintessential example of leadership. You know, thank you, Walt. Um, to Donna Martin, to, to Stu, um, you all have been tremendous battle buddies. I'm going to miss you. Uh, to my backbones, my Command Sergeant Majors, Command Sergeant Major Diamond Huff. Where are you at, Sergeant Major Huff? My battle, my battle rattle. Um, by far, sorry SMA, the best <laughs> command sergeant major that I have met in my 35 years of service. And he's a 68 whiskey. A medic, a medic. I know the SMA would get mad at me during the Army USAA and a medic would be the best sniper or win the best soldier because I'm out there, Army medicine, he's a medic, he's a medic. Because Army medicine is Army strong. And it's because of Command Sergeant Major Diamond Huff and, and his example. So uh, Command Sergeant Major Huff and Marie, thank you uh, for being my ride or die. To Command Sergeant Major Gregg, Grace, Leg, White, McGinnis, Devalier, Stoddard, Golston, Hammock, Patterson, you all are truly backbone command sergeant majors who have impacted my life. To the Morgan State University general officers, uh, we produced 16, as the chief said, and I think today we have four of them here, General Ellis, General Ward, General Prather, and General Williams. Thank you for, for your example and pulling me in under, under your wings. I think General Miller here is from the Air Force, and 
We have the, the, the baddest woman in the United States Army, Department of Defense, Director of the DHA, my little sister, uh, Lieutenant General Talita Crossland. She'll be somewhere in here, too. I see you. <laughs> to Coach Forrest, you know, you heard General McConville's remarks. And, and Coach Forrest and my PMS, Lieutenant Colonel Bob Cheeks, who just suffered a stroke and couldn't be here, uh, poured into me and would never let me quit. You know, the young, the young kid, you know, free safety who just wanted to play professional football and nothing else. And even when I stopped going to ROTC for about a month, you know, I think we had Sam, I quit for a month. They wouldn't let me quit. And I was like, man, just let me quit. I'm done. I'm done. But Coach Forrest and Colonel Cheeks wouldn't, would not let me quit. So, so Coach Forrest and Colonel Cheeks, in his absence, thank you for never giving up on <clears throat> air conditions. Who's messed with air conditions? <laughs> on the young kid from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Thank you for what you do. To my father in the ministry, Bishop Bryant, the greatest example of godly power, humility, and servant leadership who's been with me the entire journey. And, and has always been there. Thank you. My, my late mother in the ministry, Bishop Sarah Davis, who taught me to never fail the life test, be humble, that we're here to serve, and, and Scotty, don't get the big head. You know, I, I, I miss you. Uh, to my big brothers, Bishop Gatewood and Bishop Jones, I thank you. To the men of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity and my Lion brothers from Pi Chapter 1985, your presence alone always speaks volumes. Your friendship has been essential to my soul. To my fellow Morgan State University and Frederick Douglass High School alumni, my home people from Summit Ridge, you know, much love. You made me the man that I am. And then to my many teammates from the OTSG, the MedCom, 30th Med Brigade, 44th Med Brigade, 18th Airborne Corps, who showed me that professional leadership excellence and synergistic teamwork and fun could change cultures impact lives and make coming to work each day pure joy, I say thank you. To my aide-de-camps, Leslie, Steve, Breslin, Hillary, Sonny, Renee, and Kelly, and XOs, Mike, Christy, and Ryan, and Team TSG in its entirety, thank you for your dedication, support, and excellence. To my late mom and dad who cannot be here but are here in spirit, the pain of their absence still resonates like it was yesterday. And to my dream girl, my best friend, my angel, and better half for 36 years this November, Sonia. And, and Cousin Ronald, she is still my honey bunny, my sugar wooger, the scramble <laughs> in my eggs, the secret in my sauce, and the peanut in my butter. <laughs> Sonia, no words or gifts could express what you mean to me and our family. You are our rock and mama bear. Thank you for making this all possible. The strongest woman in the world. She's carried me for 36 years and 40 total when she finally gave me a chance. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, the temp air condition hit again. The best decision I, I ever made for our family in my 35 years of service is not joining the professional arms, but it was marrying my wife, Sonia. Thank you. <laughs> for being my unconditional wife, number one ride or die and better half. Sonia gets it all from me, from being everything from my training partner, sounding board, counselor, but most of all, my one and only unconditional love of my life. She took care of me steadily through my even recent knee replacement uh, eight weeks ago. But she can also give you tough love too. It started out good after the knee replacement. And, and, and I was incapacitated, and, and the surgeon said, all right, now you got to get massages and, and work the kneecap and the knee. And, and Sonia started off working the kneecap, Donna, and it started out good at first, and then all of a sudden she said, you need to massage your own knee. <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am, we will. <laughs> to my children, Ashley, Ray, Dominique, Deliana, Gia, Master Donovan, Morgan, I love you, thank you. I got the greatest children in the world. I'm also blessed to have my sister here today. I was mentioned, Renita, and my sister-in-law, Scarlett, my, my, my in-law parents, uh, Earl and Carolyn Howard. Um, thank you all. Y'all are just simply amazing. 
there's just too many of my family here to name. You know, they've literally traveled from across the country. Thank you for your unconditional love and steadfast love. Uh, you all are amazing. My counsel, the matriarch of, of our family now, who is recognized, thank you for, for your example and your spirit. I love each of you, and your presence here today means so much. And to all of our distinguished guests and friends that made it out today, I just simply wanted to just say thank you. Jim McConville, it's been the greatest honor and most humbling experience to lead Army Medicine as the 45th Surgeon General. You charged me to get the Army Medicine and MedCom in step with the Army. We acknowledge and nested under the Army priorities. We understood fully your number one priority, people, and we successfully answered the nation's call. The most powerful Army in the world must have in parallel the greatest medical instrument of power conserving its vital strength. We now have irreversible positive momentum to support the Army and the Joint Force. The Army medicine soldiers and team from the foxhole to the fixed facility will always be ready, reform, reorganized, responsive, and relevant. As I take my seat, I just give a final thanks to the HQDA and MedCom protocol teams for making this happen. And then Sonia and I are just truly humbled and thankful for this tremendous blessing to have served as the Army's 45th Surgeon General. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your presence here today. May the grace of God continue to bless you as we all live in the overflow of his blessings. And may he bless our deployed service members in harm's way in the United States of America. Army medicine is and will continue to be all it can be, and that is Army strong. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Army Saw.
Ladies and gentlemen, Bishop John Bryant will now have the benediction. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each one of you, henceforth, now, and forever. And we all said together, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain in place until the departure of the official party. You are welcome to join Lieutenant General Dingle and his family in the receiving line, taking place in Brucker Hall in the United States Army Band Building, located at 400 McNair Road here on Fort Myer. As you depart, ushers are available to assist you with directions. <laughs>